What's the first sign that a movie is going to be bad? Characters think they are funny because they speak loudly. Also references to farts or weed, not jokes. References. Hey, guys, who wants to smoke some weed? Pause for laughter. If there are multiple trailers for a comedy movie, but they use the same joke in all of them, this is legit. Something that always bugged me was the first Deadpool movie and its trailers. Don't get me wrong, I love the movie, but here you have a character wearing a mask, played by an actor known for comedy in a movie that probably had a ton of jokes and multiple takes left on the cutting room floor. They could have easily dubbed different jokes into the trailer and used the final ones in the movie for an extra surprise. But nope, trailer jokes, kind of a bummer. You can look at the ad and already tell how the story will start and end. It's a remake of something that didn't suck. I hate that there's so many remakes of decent good movies. Feels like it's just a safe money grab. It would be cool if movies that didn't do so hot get reworked into good movie remakes. But I guess that's too much of a risk for studios to bother with. Joe So So Movie Reviews, Blogspot, Complovis, Weekly Herald, Upsy Morning, News 59, Podon. A non-stop thrill ride, definitely exists, Boston Globe. Director's mother. I once read a book, can't remember the title, cause it was like 20 years ago and I was a kid. On the back, one of the reviews was a fun reader, a Toronto man. Funniest comedy of the year, it's January. A uh, great movie. Directing credit goes to Alan Smithy. He's so talented though. I've seen his name on virtually every genre. You're not actually allowed to use that name anymore because Eric Idle made a movie where he was a director named Alan Smithy who wanted to not be credited for a terrible movie, but the only name he could use was Alan Smithy. I guess it pissed the director's guild off that he was mocking the system that way and just said, fine, fuck it. You can't do that anymore. Selling points are focused on celebrity names and visual effects. From the team that brought you Fast Five, and it's the sound guy, best boy, and one the caterers. An exposition in which one character explains everything that's going on to another character that should already know what is going on. Stacy, sweetie, you know I haven't been the same since your brother disappeared four years ago at the creek. And then we moved here to get away from the bad memories, but it didn't change anything. And now you're moving to college. I've been finding it hard to accept. I'm struggling to hold down my job. The diner, that new guy I'm seeing, is acting really shady. Disappears for days, for days. See, completely unrelated to all that there's mysterious murders happening since he arrived in town. You know all this, Stacy whilst unpacking the shopping in the first scene. As you all know. Whoa, 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 who? Back up. You're saying that you went to Reddit, saw a thread about identifying signs that a movie would be bad, and then you decided to comment on it? When the trailer already tells you the entire movie, I've scratched titles off my watch list because I feel I've already seen the important parts of the film through the trailer. Why bother? Not always the case, but when there are more than three writers, a movie tends to lack vision. It can also occur due to rewrites. Not a bomb podcast reviews movies that bombed financially or critically, and this is a subject often discussed if anyone is interested. You mean the too many cooks in the kitchen mentality? It's another thing I hate about music albums. Too many writers mean everything is just pumped out to be able to get the songs out as fast as possible and not good or specific to the artist. It's advertised as one of the best movies of the year. And it's late January. Fuck you. It's January. Someone else put in the work to make the property popular in the first place. And the people in charge of making a movie put zero effort into making it look or feel like the property it's based on, relying on the name and special effects alone. This applies to more than movies. See video game series kept alive after the original studio disbands a fold. 2010's Avatar, The Last Airbender movie, and the Michael Bay Transformers franchise are the hardest hitting ones of this phenomenon for me. I loved both of these growing up, and those movies absolutely ate shit. Hello TV show. Forced character exposition to move the plot along. Or when they do, tell not show. Someone explained how the hero is great, intelligent, etc. But they don't show that. And hero is piece of old rug. The trailer is over the top and includes every joke in the movie. 
and it says things like, from the producers that gave you XZ movies. It's been in production for too long. There's always a reason for a recent example. Chaos Walking. It changed screenwriter, director, and production company so many times over ten years, but was sold on it being a Charlie Kaufman movie, starring Daisy Ridley and Tom Holland. Kaufman left in 2013. Ridley and Holland filmed it over years due to so many reshoots and failed screenings. Then, Lionsgate said the negative reviews were shocking to them. Really? When I wanna get up to get some snacks five minds into the movie, but don't pause it because I feel like I'm probably not missing out on much. You gotta work on your snack logistics if you're dry after five minutes. It's advertised as sexy. Sex sells, but it's usually a cheap way to get sales. You can tell the acting is awful, even from the trailer. Cats, emoji movie, other examples of that comes to the mind. Family moves in, guess what? Someone got killed in their new home. Hey, what happened to the last people who owned this place? They were eaten alive by pirates, my dude. I want to raise my kids here. Birds won't fly over the house, and the townsfolk are kinda weird. But hey, it was a bargain and just the thing they need to fix their strained marriage and finish their next novel. Jennifer Lopez is in it, and it's about weddings. No, Rosa Maria, you can't marry your rich client. You are the wedding planner and the daughter of immigrants. It ends with them getting married in the middle of a Puerto Rican town. When there are like 10 production studio motifs before the actual film starts. The preview shows a girl who's just too focused on career to find love going back to her small hometown for whatever reason. Every Hallmark Christmas movie. It stars Steven Siegel. Steven Siegel movies are simply vehicles for money laundering. Allegedly, Updated for modern audiences, our imagining of a classic tale. When it's a comedy and the main character is a legendary actor playing a dad or grandpa. If it's a non-modern piece with modern hair and makeup in it, I had a hard time watching True Grit, the John Wayne one, because the female lady's hairstyle was very clearly from the 1960s. And it was so distracting. None of the characters understand that sneaking away from summer camp to have sex is going to start a murderous rampage of all but one of the remaining summer campers. When the trailer says something like from the studio that brought you X or from the producer that brought you X, it doesn't have a real establishing shot and I spend the first 15 minutes trying to figure out where and when the narrative takes place. Also, if the dialogue feels unnatural, it's an adaptation, and the director or the studio already discusses the changes he made, which makes it clear they don't understand the audience. Percy Jackson, we aged the characters and added in romance golden compass, take out the religious controversy to appeal to the American audience. And other stuff they'll blab like we wanted to make it more inclusive, and did this read. I didn't focus on the main story plot, because it was more important to include my agenda in. And I hope you take note of it. Tyler Perry presents I have a feeling the Mario movie is going to bad. It just has the fan service with all the Easter eggs. Feels like it's one of those movies where the main character is going to say something goofy like this game is excellent. Maybe we should call it Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in the middle of my movie. They start throwing out buzzwords unironically. As someone who loves progressive themes in movies, the second someone tosses out something like toxic masculinity, I know it's not gonna be good. The primary rule in storytelling is show, don't tell. And a lot of movies that want to be progressive and make people think, don't think their audience is smart enough to figure out stuff like symbolism and nuance and basic storytelling. So they're gonna smack you over the head with just how progressive they are. A good example of this is comparing the original Black Christmas from the 70s to the most recent remake, ignoring the one with all the eyeballs. The original one was a feminist movie with complex female characters who aren't dying with their tits out. The protagonist has an abortion and is not painted as a bad person for it. All the women in the movie are different and are allowed to be smart, rude and imperfect. It's feminist because at the time this was much rarer in movies, especially the abortion part. Meanwhile, the most recent version of Black Christmas is trying really hard to be feminist, including a character who is a walking Instagram infographic, and while I appreciate the themes they were trying to explore, they spell it all out in the dialogue and don't let the visuals and the symbolism.
speak for themselves. You can absolutely have great movies with progressive themes. You just have to rest it like any other movie and focus on the storytelling, not proving to the audience that you're up on all the feminist terms. Telda, if a movie wants to explore themes like gender, race, sexuality, etc., and just starts throwing out buzzwords, the movie is gonna be us because they don't listen to show, don't tell, and focus on making a good movie edit. Requisite thank you for the gold kind stranger. I think this is the first one I've gotten, and I'm very happy it's on this post. Edit 2. I'm seeing a few people misconstrue this as using words like white privilege and having people of color at all, so I want to clarify. The use of the term throwing around is important here. Movies and TV should absolutely discuss topics like white privilege, toxic masculinity, etc. And them using those terms doesn't make them automatically bad. When they start tossing them out without any real purpose, other than winning points with the audience or seeming smart, or making a very surface level commentary, is a bad thing. A show taking the time to discuss white privilege does not mean it's bad. A show having an activist character toss out the term to show they're an activist without actually bothering to talk about the subject is a sign that there's probably not a lot of thought going into it. Updating previous characters to make them black or queer or a woman isn't necessarily a bad thing, but if there's no real thought behind it and they just want the viewers that having characters like that brings, it's bad. Having characters of color, women, queer people, disabled people, and using words and sentences related to those communities is not a bad thing. Using those terms incorrectly, whether that's poor writing or corporate diversity, is the problem and makes the movies bad. Having black elves or having marginalized characters talk about their experiences is not an indicator that a movie will be bad. The more advertisements you see spanning different media, that's the number one indicator for me.